Now that the truck is done and I've been driving it and having fun, I wanted to start a new series called About the Build, where I talk about all the parts I've been using, uh, how everything went together, uh, what I liked, what I didn't like, what I think I'd do differently next time. Um, just kind of a general uh, in-depth view of what I, uh, what I did on this build. I've had quite a few questions about the electrical system, so we're going to go ahead and start with that today. Um, and then down the road, we'll talk about maybe suspension, brakes, steering, the LS stuff, uh, the rear end, you know, just kind of all of that stuff. But today, we're going to go ahead and focus on the electrical system. So on this truck, there are three systems, if you will, that I, uh, that I did. Um, it has the American Auto Wire body, body harness, which I completely rewired the whole truck, took all the stock stuff out, threw it in the dump, and threw it in the trash. It was spliced so many ways that it was, it was a mess. Um, and I've also got the LS harness, which is on the engine, that goes to the computer, and then I've also got the Dakota Digital stuff, which I will kind of go through each system and kind of see what I did and uh, how they integrated. So first off, we're going to start off with the uh, American Auto Wire body harness. And I'm going to go ahead and put that, uh, link that down here in the description to the kit I bought. Uh, great kit. One big caveat, the crimpers. They, uh, these are a Packard's 56 series uh, terminal. Buy the crimpers. Either buy them, rent them. American Auto Wire rents them for 20 bucks, I think, for 30 days or borrow them. I was fortunate I had a buddy that had them, so I borrowed them from him, but you will need them. You can buy some of the knockoffs, and they work, kinda, but these are the correct crimpers for these terminal types. Um, the thing with these 56 series is they are really thick uh, material. So trying to use a crimper that is made for a modern day terminal, it's really hard to get these because these are so much thicker than a modern day terminal that it's really, you got to have that ratcheting action of those uh, original crimpers. And Delphi does still sell them. I think you can buy them. They're not cheap. I think they're like 200 bucks to set them, something like that. But like I said, they, they rent them. But uh, anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, as far as the wiring harness goes, great kit. Cannot recommend it enough. It is amazing. Um, it has all the circuits you need plus like 12 extras. Uh, goes back in like stock. You have to trim the hole out here a little bit for the bulkhead. No big deal. Um, just, I mean, it was just slightly. I used a die grinder on, a, on, a, uh, on a, an, an air grinder, so no big deal. Uh, as far as the wiring goes, I wired it like stock. Uh, I didn't tuck it. But I've got, because uh, it's, it's like stock, it's got power and engine on this side, and this side over here is lights. So I ran mine up and over through the stock gutter and this way along the fender across the, the stock gutter up here. Uh, you can tuck them if you want. I just didn't really care because, uh, you know, the wires are so tiny there. And I mean, I don't know. I, I like mechanical things. I like seeing things. I don't want to tuck it so that there's just a motor floating in here. Some people love that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just did. I don't care. Um... But yeah, so it wired. Uh, this kit comes with, I'd say probably 95% is unterminated, so you can run the wires however you want. They run, they have lots of extra wire. I've got a box up, upstairs in the attic that, uh, um, just all the extra wires, which is great, because this is all factory color-coded. It's actually got text on the wires of what it is, so that's nice. Um, so it's just, it's really a great kit. It includes everything all the way back under dash uh, ato style fuses uh, like i say it's got extra circuits on it left and right uh, we'll get to that here in a second about uh, integration but uh, the only thing that i did differently than stock is i put as far as the body harness is i have relays up here for my headlights the high and low beams so i took the burden off of the uh, stock switch up there so that we're not running all the the current through the stock switch because I've got hella e codes in here with h4s So I went ahead and just put them on relays from the battery. So they're getting direct power from the battery uh, I'll put it up a little picture here on how I wired that uh, Basically, I just used the stock wires that come this way that would have gone to the headlights as triggers on the relays so that it uh, um, pulls power straight from the uh, battery to the headlight um, and then I've got them piggyback next to each other so they only want to work at a time. Uh, and I'll, I'll show that in the, in the picture uh, just because you can, you can feed into one relay so that when it is normally closed or open, normally open, sorry, I'm getting myself confused, normally open, it's feeding power. So when the, first, when the low beam is not triggered, it's feeding power through the relay, back out of the relay, and into the other relay. Uh, it'll make more sense when I put that picture up there once you study that. But 
like I say, super easy. Um, the only extra part I bought was the heater fan harness, which goes through the firewall and it goes down and it's got, uh, I think three or four wires that go up into the, to the, the, uh, American auto wire harness. I, I bought that cause that was cut and, um, I just figured it was like 20 bucks. I bought, actually bought it from LMC, uh, just down the road. They had, uh, that, and they sell American auto wire there. So I got that, but everything else, the entire, every other bit of wiring in the truck on the body that is comes with that kit minus that right there. Uh, very comprehensive kit. Uh, can't recommend it enough. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start talking here about the uh, LS harness here real quick. I'm going to go over there on that side of the truck. Under the seat here, this is under the passenger seat, I have the ECM and the uh, this, this, this uh, LS harness is actually from PSI Conversions. Uh, I'll put the link to that as well down there. So I've got the fuse panel and relay center and the ECU mounted underneath the passenger seat here and then over onto the, uh, if I can get a light over there, it makes sense there. Uh, yep, you can kind of see it. Next to the fire extinguisher and the tool kit there, you can see the red terminal there. That is actually the tack module for the pedal and the OBD2 port. So I tucked everything underneath the seat here primarily because I wanted my system separate. And I thought this was a good spot. I didn't want to mount it under the dash because I'm going to put vintage air in my truck and I didn't want to take up too much real estate with this thing because this ECM is kind of bulky and so is this uh, fuse panel here. I got some blue there. Um, sorry, just random thoughts. I just saw something on my seat that I need to clean off. Uh, the only thing I modified on this uh, PSI conversions harness here is this relay right here is missing. That is actually the... Uh, uh, fuel pump relay and I broke that out and I, once we get to the engine bay I'll kind of talk about why I did that and so that's missing there but I just made a little bracket so I can stand this relay center up I bought this bracket from an off-road shop I'll put, I'll put a link down there um, where I bought those from I think I paid 20 bucks for those brackets real nice laser cut I just threw some paint on them um, but yeah that's pretty much it so everything tucks nicely under the seat of uh, my truck my truck's been a 72 um, they do make lowering brackets and my buddy over at Whitlock Garage has some in his truck. He's going to take some measurements for me one of these days when I, when I, uh, remember to ask him, but, uh, I might put some lowering brackets in here to see if, if we can't lower the seat down. But for right now under the stock seat, it clears with plenty of room. So that's pretty much it under here. So let's go ahead and uh, work back out to the uh, engine bay. So right here in the engine bay, uh, the LS harness is actually kind of hidden. You really can't see anything. Uh, when I originally built this thing, I did not have the engine cover on it, and it was kind of a, like an 11th hour decision to go ahead and buy this thing. I actually found a smoking deal on this thing brand new, so I went ahead and bought it. Uh, still not sure how I feel about it, but I don't know. Everybody seems to like it. I don't, you know, I, my gut was, when I saw the picture, I was like, oh, that red, it would match the truck, and it actually does, but it just, I don't know. It's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Neither here nor there. But anyway, the LS harness comes uh, through the floor, from under the seat, through the floor, up the spine of the transmission, up to the back side of the engine on this side, and then it breaks off and does this side and this side, and then goes back down on that side for the transmission. So it's hidden. You can't see it at all. Uh, the only thing you can see on this thing is the MAF wire and the coolant sensor wire. Uh, pretty simple, uh, pretty clean. You can't see any of the wires. It really wasn't my intention, but they just kind of, they just disappeared. So you really can't see them. Now for the fuel pump that I was talking about a minute ago, I went ahead and let me get my flashlight out of here. I, um, broke that out of the, um, the, the panel there uh, on the, the PSI conversion harness and I put my own back here. So I have, you can see it there. Uh, I got the fuel pump. I got the lights, fan one and fan two back here. And then right below that, and I don't know if this is going to show up or not. Oh, yeah, there we go. I've got three relays down here for fan one, fan two, and the fuel pump. And what I did that for is because I kind of wanted to keep all of my power for uh, everything I'm adding together. So I have the three relays over here, and I've got the two relays over there for the headlights. So they're actually all, those two and these three are all wired in together through this, this bus panel right here. And then there's a circuit breaker on the bottom of the battery tray, a 100 amp circuit breaker that runs those. And that comes up with one of these six gauge wires right here. The other six gauge wire goes over to the alternator. So this has got the big 145 amp alternator on it. So I put a six gauge that runs down and around and it snakes its way over to the alternator. But that's pretty much it for the LS harness uh, out here. Um, like I say, it's, it's on there. You really can't see it because 
it's covered up by this cover. But when I, I originally wasn't going to put this cover on it, I ran the wires. It, it's like I say, it splits back there, goes like this and like this. I had it on the inside of the fuel rails, so you couldn't see it other than there's some wires poking out here and there. Uh, the coal pack wires came out. Uh, just I, I did it kind of clean like, just because I don't like this corrugated tubing at all. This corrugated uh, stuff. It just to me it looks terrible, but. I don't know. It's it's there. I didn't want to spend the extra money that PSI wanted for uh, the nylon uh, loom that they sell. So I'm just kind of cheap like that. But in hindsight, I probably should have. But yeah, neither here nor there. So um, anyway, I'm going to head inside the truck now and we can talk about uh, kind of some integration of the systems. Inside the truck here, I've got the three systems and I'm going to talk about how I integrated them now. So uh, we've got the uh, American Auto Wire harness down here. Let's see if we can see here. Yep, that, there's the uh, the fuse panel there and how it wires together. And I've got underneath the uh, passenger seat and the driver's seat is all the LS stuff. And then all the Dakota digital stuff is actually underneath the dash right here. I've got uh, Velcroed, high, high strength Velcroed to the bottom of the dash right here. So uh, this is where things got a little hairy and I kind of went a little crazy on how I wired this thing, but I eventually got it done. Um, I did, went through like 15 iterations of how I wanted to do it and I was making it too hard on myself and it ended up being super simple. So the LS, as you know, like literally takes two wires to fire. It's got a, it means a power and a ground. Well, three in this case because it has a switched power. So it's got power that runs up through the harness off of the uh, starter post, which on the American Auto Wire kit, the starter post is the junction point. So that worked out well. So it's pulling power there. It's got grounds and it's also got one wire that comes over here that goes to uh, a circuit that is hot while cranking. So that's it. Make them start. You know, there's not much to these LS swaps. Uh, as far as integration goes, that's as far, as far as it went from the LS harness to the truck. There's that's there's nothing else. Um, the Dakota Digital to that, there were a couple wires. I had to run um, a check engine light and uh, drawing a blank, but there was it was nothing nothing big on that. Uh, these gauges actually pull all of their data through a BIM module, the Dakota Digital BIM module, and I'll put part numbers for all of this down in the description too, and where to buy it and all that. So it pulls all of the all of the data, with exception to oil pressure from the OBD2 port. Uh, oil pressure uh, on these trucks um, originally it was part of the body control module. Uh, this truck obviously doesn't have, so I actually used the Dakota Digital oil pressure sender, and it's pulling oil pressure from that. So you run a wire from that sender all the way into the module, and you wire it in. So that is the only thing I have wired in besides the check engine light to the actual module to pull data. Everything else comes across on the OBD2 port. So pretty slick. There's not much to it. Um, as far as, uh, the remaining items, I had fan one, fan two and fuel pump since I abandoned that in there. So I have underneath the seat here, a, a, a connector that has kind of, I, I call it an interface. So there's, there's, there's a couple wires coming off that. It's got the switch 12 volt fan one, fan two and fuel pump and check engine light come off of the ECM, go through that connector. Um, on the other side, I have a uh, fuel level, uh, positive and negative that go back to the tank in the back it's under the bed so all those wires go through that there's a harness down there and what i did on that harness is a harness uh, there's a connector on this end and a connector on this end so i can unplug everything and walk away from this and all the systems can work independently well they won't be pulling data and stuff like that but um i just wanted to make it so that it could come apart easily so uh, i'll show some pictures of kind of what that connector looks like what everything looks like up here um, just kind of how I did all that, because uh, it's obviously covered up now, so you can't see it. But pretty simple. I was making it way too hard when I was doing uh, my uh, build videos uh, back when I was trying to figure it out. I sat literally for a week and a half, two weeks, trying to figure this out, and ended up being simple. I just was making it way too hard. Um, and as far as uh, the power on the bottom of this thing, so this the Dakota Digital has a constant, and it has a switched. The ECM has a switched. So I used on these American Auto Wire kits, there is a, uh, a terminal or a connector that is hanging off. It's a pigtail that they say you can use for like uh, power windows, power seats, and stuff like that. So I went through and hooked up. I've got the two switched and I've got the one constant pulling off of that. So on the fuse panel, I have fuses for those circuits, which is really nice. And then I have them labeled on the side because I have a label maker and I'm crazy with that. So I've labeled everything in this truck. But so I, everything that is running has its own circuit on the fuse panel, which is really cool. So if something blows, I know it's it's either the gauges or it's the, the ECM or, or you know, whatever, or vice versa, so that I don't have anything pigtailed, so I'm not trying to pull my hair. So everything's on its own circuit. 
So this thing has so many extra circuits, I figured why not? But um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. I think that is pretty much all the systems. Uh, as far as what I liked, liked it all. There's not much I would change on this thing. Um, maybe some different routings here and there. Um, but that's about it. Uh, everything, out worked, wor everything else worked great. I don't have any problems. All the circuits work like they're supposed to. Um, no faults, no blown fuses. Um, it's been great. I'd buy the American Auto Wire again. Actually, we're thinking about putting one in here in this Nova right here. But uh, that, it's, it's awesome. Dakota Digital, awesome. Can't go wrong with them. I have wanted one of them forever, and I finally got an opportunity to buy one. Bought one. Uh, BIM module is awesome. It's 100 bucks, which is kind of a bummer, but I'd buy one just because it makes things so much easier. You just plug it in, it pulls 99% of the data. Um, PSI conversion harness, it does exactly what it's supposed to. I don't like the corrugated uh, loom. I don't want to spend the money on the, the other loom. I, I feel like maybe if there was some sort of an alternative price-wise, I might look into it, but it does what it's supposed to do. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about it. So I guess I'm kind of neutral on it. I, nothing bad about the people. They're, they're great. I had a couple questions, and I called up. They answered everything. They even sent me out some terminals um, for some things, but great stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, I hope I didn't gloss over anything, which I probably did. So if there's anything else you guys would like to see in more detail, please let me know, and I can uh, really tear into things. Uh, I just kind of want to give a general overview of how everything worked in this thing. Um, pretty simple kit. It seems daunting, uh, especially when you're doing it. I know a couple times I was like, oh man, what am I doing? But, uh, really it's, it's not that hard. It's just wiring is kind of one of those things. It takes time to kind of sort through it. Cause there's so many wires, but, uh, this, this American auto wire kit is amazing. It helping alleviate that because everything's labeled, uh, and color coded like factor, which makes it even better. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this, uh, helps out everybody. Uh, I really enjoyed making these videos. I hope you guys like this one. If you do, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, I really would appreciate it. So kind of trying to grow the channel here and uh, get, get the name out there and uh, hopefully do some more builds here pretty quick. So I'm going to take a break for a while from the actual build. I'm going to keep talking about this and all the things on this truck. But uh, build-wise, I just want to get out and drive this thing and then uh, maybe kind of keep tinkering with it um, and just keep these videos going. So Anyway, that's it. I uh, hope everybody likes this. Um, but uh, yeah, please consider subscribing, uh, like, share the videos as always. And I appreciate it. I'll have a good day.